Hi everyone, I'm going to do a quick video for you today about toddler naps and specifically dropping from one nap to zero naps, which is always a very sad time in a parent's life when your toddler or you think your toddler might be ready to drop that one nap because we all love it when they're asleep. Um, but that day will come and it's nice to kind of have a heads up and know what to expect and what the signs are and how to go about doing it. So I guess one of the biggest signs, um, the most common time that you want to be thinking around about your toddler dropping the nap is around 2.5 years. Some toddlers drop it earlier at two, some still need naps at three or the occasional nap at three and above three. That's all completely normal as well. But what I see most often is around 2.5 years. Lots are ready to at least have the nap significantly trimmed or cut out altogether. So the biggest sign I think is that you will start to see your toddler experiencing a really delayed onset of sleep. So, you know, meaning you might pop them to bed at seven, but they might not fall asleep till eight, nine, or even 10 o'clock at night. And that is sure as eggs a time to think about dropping that nap because it just is affecting their ability to get to sleep at night. Um, at this time, their brains are really, um, we want to honour the fact that their brains are becoming more adult-like with their sleep structure and their, uh, their circadian rhythm is really dictating that um, they need to be having the bulk of their restorative sleep before midnight and not in the day anymore. Before midnight, our brains really do go into quite deep sleep. That's the same for adults as well. And we want to be taking advantage knowing that that's what happens and having those restorative hours of sleep for our toddlers before then um, so that they can regulate their emotional tanks, catch up, they're very busy growing, their brains are growing so rapidly and we wanna shift that daytime sleep into that nighttime before midnight stage where they are getting that restorative sleep. So if your child isn't going to bed, going to bed at seven but isn't getting to sleep till 9.30, that's two and a half hours of very deep restorative sleep they're missing out on. So it's something to think about. Now the second sign that they may be ready to reduce or drop the nap is they just randomly start waking up at night. Like they'll go to sleep okay, but then overnight they'll have, there'll be lots of wake ups. Maybe for half an hour, maybe they just start playing in their cot. Maybe they start calling out to you. Um, but this often happens quite rapidly. Parents can't understand why their nighttime sleep is falling apart. But if you reduce or cut out that nap, bingo, the nighttime sleep is often reinstated. The third thing to look at is if, or a bit of a sign that they might be ready to drop that nap, is if they um, start doing early morning rising. So if you've got a toddler that regularly starts waking up at 5 a.m. for no particular reason, then just have a good look and, and trim down their daytime sleep or trim down their nap and that should get them to sleep later in the morning. Now how to do it is, um, it's quite easy, but what the mistake a lot of parents make is they don't understand how long it can take and what an adjustment period it is. So it's not just a matter of cutting out the nap and then everything's fine. What the best thing, it, it's gotta be kind of gradual. So you'll generally find that experiment first with just trimming the nap significantly. If they're still mucking around at bedtime and not going straight to sleep, then cut it out altogether. But it might be a case of one day they have the nap and the next day they don't need the nap. The next day they need a short 40 minute nap, the next day they're fine without the nap. Or, and then they'll go along like that for a few weeks and then it might be two non-nap days and then they might need a nap on the third day. Um, you know, four non-nap days as they're getting a bit older and then they throw in a nap maybe once a week. So it's a really gradual thing, but in the initial stages, it can take a couple of months to really balance out the fact that they are now having days more regularly without naps than they are having days where they require a nap. So it's a progression really. But the other thing to be really aware of and the final thing I kind of want to say on this when you're dropping from one nap to zero is never be afraid to reinstate the early bedtime this is a phase of adjustment. Um, they are gonna be tired. It does take a while for their circadian rhythm to shift that day sleep to the nighttime sleep. So compensate by giving them a super early bedtime so they do get a chance to catch up on that extra sleep that they definitely need because you've taken away in the day. 
So um, just be really conscious of the fact that you're gonna to have to bring their bedtime quite a lot earlier while they kind of ride out this adjustment period. All right, guys, thank you for listening. If you know anyone that's going through this at the moment or is thinking about this coming up for them, just share the video with them or tag them in the video. And I'm so happy to be answering any of your um, questions about dropping down from one nap, something that might be a bit more specific to your baby or your toddler. Just write the questions in the comments and I will answer them all for you. All right, guys, thanks for listening. We'll um, chat soon.